Ethan Caldwell was a rich man who liked to be alone. He lived in a big house near Savannah, Georgia. Ethan didn't like surprises or changes in his life. But one night, everything changed. It was dark and rainy. Ethan heard a strange noise outside his front door. He wasn't sure what it was, so he went to check. When he opened the door, he couldn't believe his eyes. There, on his doorstep, was a baby. The baby was wrapped in a blanket. Next to her was a note. Ethan picked up the note and read it. It said, please keep her safe. They're coming. Ethan was shocked. He didn't know what to do. Before we continue, let us know where you're watching from. And if you enjoy this story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more. Ethan looked at the baby girl. She was sleeping peacefully. He didn't know anything about taking care of babies. He thought about calling the police, but then he remembered the note. It said someone was coming. Maybe the baby was in danger. Ethan picked up the baby and brought her inside. He was scared and confused. What should he do? He wasn't used to taking care of anyone but himself. But something about this baby made him want to protect her. He looked at the baby again. She was so small and helpless. Ethan felt something he hadn't felt in a long time he cared about someone else. He decided to keep the baby safe, at least for now. Ethan didn't know it yet, but this was just the beginning of a big adventure. His quiet life was about to change in ways he never imagined. As the night went on, Ethan tried to figure out what to do. He didn't have any baby stuff in his big house. No diapers, no baby food, nothing. He looked online to learn how to take care of a baby. It seemed hard, but he wanted to try. The baby woke up and started crying. Ethan didn't know how to make her stop. He tried holding her, rocking her, but nothing worked. Then he thought maybe she was hungry. He found some milk in his fridge and warmed it up. The baby drank it and stopped crying. Ethan felt proud. He had done something right. But he knew this was just the start. He had so many questions. Who left this baby here? Why did they choose him? And who were the they that were coming? As the sun came up, Ethan looked at the sleeping baby. He decided to call her Lily. He didn't know why, but the name just felt right. Lily opened her eyes and looked at Ethan. He felt something strange in his heart. It was like she trusted him completely. Ethan knew he had to make a big decision. Should he call the police? Or should he keep Lily and try to figure out what was going on? The note scared him. If Lily was in danger, maybe the police couldn't help. Maybe they would make things worse. He thought about his life. He had lots of money, but he was always alone. He didn't have any friends or family he was close to. Maybe this was a chance to change that. Maybe Lily was here for a reason. Ethan made up his mind. He would keep Lily safe. He would try to find out why she was left with him. And he would do everything he could to protect her from whoever was coming. As he made this decision, Ethan felt both scared and excited. His life would never be the same. But for the first time in years, he felt like he had a purpose. He had someone to care for, someone who needed him. Ethan looked at Lily and smiled. Don't worry, little one, he said. I'll keep you safe. We'll figure this out together. And so began the biggest adventure of Ethan's life. He didn't know what was coming, but he was ready to face it. For Lily, he would do anything. Ethan couldn't stop thinking about the note that came with Lily. It was short, but it scared him. He read it again and again, trying to understand what it meant. The note had some words and some numbers. Ethan didn't know what the numbers meant. Were they a code? A phone number? He had no idea. Ethan knew he needed help. He couldn't figure this out alone. He thought about who he could trust. Then he remembered his old friend, Clara Bennett. Clara was really smart. She knew how to figure out hard puzzles and codes. Ethan hadn't talked to her in a long time, but he hoped she would help him. 
he called Clara and told her he needed help. He didn't say why over the phone. It felt too dangerous. Clara agreed to come over. When Clara arrived, she was surprised to see baby Lily. Ethan told her the whole story. About finding Lily on his doorstep and the strange note. Clara looked at the note. Her eyes got big when she saw the numbers. This is interesting, she said. I think these numbers mean something important. Ethan and Clara started working together to figure out what the numbers meant. They tried different things. Maybe it was a date? A code for letters? They kept trying. As they worked, Ethan felt something change. He and Clara used to be good friends. But they hadn't talked in years. Now, working together, he remembered why he liked her so much. Clara was kind and smart. She was good with Lily too. When Lily cried, Clara knew how to make her happy. Ethan was glad he had called her. They worked for hours. Sometimes they thought they were close to figuring it out. Other times they felt lost. But they didn't give up. Then, late at night, Clara found something. Ethan, she said, I think these numbers are coordinates. Like for a map. Ethan was excited. This could be a big clue. They looked up the coordinates on a map. It showed a place Ethan knew. It was a bank where he kept some of his money. But why would the note point to his bank? Ethan felt confused and a little scared. Was someone trying to steal his money? Or was there something at the bank he needed to find? Clara had another idea. She thought maybe the numbers weren't just coordinates. Maybe they were also a code for something else. She kept working on it. As the night went on, Ethan watched Clara work. He felt grateful to have her help. He also felt something else. Something he hadn't felt in a long time. He liked having her around. Suddenly, Clara gasped. Ethan, she said, I think I found something. These numbers, they're not just about your bank. They're connected to your family. Ethan was shocked. His family? He hadn't talked to his family in years. How could this be about them? Clara explained what she found. The numbers were like a puzzle. When you solved it, it showed a connection between Ethan's bank account and an account belonging to his brother, Marcus. Ethan couldn't believe it. He and Marcus hadn't talked in years. They had a big fight a long time ago. Ethan thought that was the end of it. But now, it seemed like Marcus was involved in this mystery somehow. As the sun came up, Ethan and Clara looked at each other. They were tired, but they felt like they had made progress. They had solved part of the puzzle, but there was still so much they didn't know. Ethan looked at Lily, sleeping peacefully in her makeshift bed. He felt more determined than ever to protect her and solve this mystery. Whatever was going on, it was bigger than he thought. It involved his family, his money, and maybe even more. Clara put her hand on Ethan's shoulder. We'll figure this out, she said. Together. Ethan nodded. He was glad he wasn't alone in this anymore. With Clara's help, maybe they could uncover the truth and keep Lily safe. As they sat there, tired but hopeful, Ethan realized something. His quiet, lonely life was over. A new chapter had begun. And even though it was scary, he was ready for whatever came next. Ethan sat in his big living room, thinking about his past. It had been a long time since he thought about his family, especially his brother Marcus. Now, with the mystery of baby Lily and the strange numbers, he had to remember things he tried to forget. Clara was still there, helping him. She asked Ethan to tell her about his family. It wasn't easy for him to talk about it, but he knew he had to. Ethan started telling his story. He and Marcus grew up in a rich family. Their parents were always busy with work and parties. Ethan and Marcus only had each other. As kids, they were close. They played together and looked out for each other. But as they got older, things changed. Marcus started doing things Ethan didn't like. He lied, he cheated, and he got into trouble a lot. Ethan tried to help Marcus, 
but it never worked. Marcus just got angry and said Ethan thought he was better than everyone else. They fought more and more. Then, something big happened. Their parents died in an accident. Ethan and Marcus were left with all the family money. Ethan wanted to use it to help people. Marcus wanted to use it for himself. They had a huge fight. Marcus said terrible things to Ethan. Ethan was so hurt and angry that he told Marcus to leave and never come back. That was the last time they saw each other. After that, Ethan used his money to help people, but he also became lonely. He didn't trust anyone. He lived alone in his big house, away from everyone. As Ethan finished his story, he felt sad. He missed the brother he used to have. He wondered what happened to Marcus after all these years. Clara listened to everything. She didn't judge Ethan. She just tried to understand. When Ethan was done, she had an idea. Ethan, she said, I think we need to look into what Marcus has been doing. The numbers in the note are connected to him somehow. Maybe he's involved with Lily. Ethan didn't want to believe it, but he knew Clara was right. They had to find out what Marcus was doing. They started looking into Marcus's life. Clara used her computer skills to find information. What they found was shocking. Marcus had been busy in the years since Ethan last saw him. He had accounts in different countries. He was involved with some big companies. But some things looked strange. There were big amounts of money moving around. It didn't make sense. It looked like Marcus might be doing something illegal. As they dug deeper, Ethan felt worse and worse. Had his brother become a criminal? Was that why Lily was left with Ethan? To keep her safe from whatever Marcus was involved in? Clara found more connections. Some of the companies Marcus worked with were known for not being honest. There were rumors about them stealing ideas and secrets from other companies. Ethan couldn't believe it. His brother, who he used to love and trust, might be mixed up in something really bad. And somehow, little Lily was part of it all. As they worked, Lily woke up and started crying. Ethan picked her up and held her close. Looking at her innocent face, he felt more determined than ever to protect her and find out the truth. Clara watched Ethan with Lily. She saw how much he cared for the baby already. She knew they had to solve this mystery, not just for Ethan and Marcus, but for Lily too. Ethan, Clara said, I think we need help. This is bigger than we thought. We need someone who knows how to investigate things like this. Ethan nodded. He knew Clara was right. They needed someone with experience in solving crimes and uncovering secrets. Someone they could trust. As the day turned to night, Ethan and Clara made a plan. They would find someone to help them. They would keep digging into Marcus's activities. And most importantly, they would do everything they could to keep Lily safe. Ethan looked at Clara and Lily. Just a few days ago, he was all alone. Now he had two people he cared about and a big mystery to solve. He was scared, but he was also excited. For the first time in years, he felt like he was doing something important. As they sat there, making plans and taking care of Lily, Ethan felt something change inside him. He wasn't just a lonely rich man anymore. He was part of something bigger. And he was ready to face whatever came next. Ethan knew they needed help. He thought hard about who they could trust. Then he remembered someone from his past, Detective Leo Ramirez. Leo was a smart cop who Ethan met years ago. Leo helped Ethan with a problem at his company. Ethan trusted Leo because he was honest and good at his job. Ethan called Leo and asked him to come over. He didn't say why on the phone. It felt too dangerous to talk about Lily and the mystery over the phone. When Leo arrived, he was surprised to see Ethan with a baby and a woman he didn't know. Ethan introduced Clara and explained everything that had happened. Leo listened carefully. He looked at the note and the information they had found about Marcus. His face got serious. This is big, Leo said. Much bigger than you think. I've heard rumors about companies stealing secrets. 
This might be connected. Leo agreed to help them. He said they needed to be very careful. If Marcus was involved in something illegal, it could be dangerous for all of them. They started working together as a team. Leo used his police skills to dig deeper into Marcus's activities. Clara used her computer skills to follow the money. Ethan took care of Lily and tried to remember anything that might help from his past with Marcus. As they worked, they found more and more strange things. Marcus wasn't just moving money around. He was connected to some very powerful people. People who didn't like others knowing their business. One day, Clara found something big. Guys, she said, I think I know what this is all about. It's not just money. It's about stealing secrets. Big secrets that could change the world. She showed them what she found. Marcus and his friends were trying to steal plans for new technology. Technology that could make them very rich and powerful. Ethan felt sick. His brother was mixed up in something so wrong. But he also felt worried. If this was true, Lily might be in even more danger than they thought. Leo looked grim. We need to move fast, he said. If these people think we know about their plans, they'll come after us. And Lily. They made a plan. They would gather all the evidence they could. Then they would take it to people Leo trusted in the government. People who could stop Marcus and his friends. But as they worked on their plan, something scary happened. Ethan saw a car watching his house. When he told Leo, Leo said he had seen strange people following him too. They realized they were running out of time. The bad guys knew they were onto them. They had to act fast to stay safe and to protect Lily. Ethan looked at Lily, playing happily on the floor. He felt scared but also brave. He would do anything to keep her safe. He looked at Clara and Leo. He was glad he wasn't alone anymore. We can do this, Ethan said. We have to. For Lily, and for all the people these bad guys might hurt. Clara and Leo nodded. They were scared too, but they were ready to fight. Together, they would face whatever came next. As night fell, they made their final plans. Tomorrow, they would make their move. They would try to stop Marcus and his friends. They would try to keep Lily safe. Ethan couldn't sleep that night. He watched Lily sleeping peacefully. He thought about how much his life had changed. He wasn't just living for himself anymore. He had people to protect, a wrong to make right. As the sun came up, Ethan, Clara, and Leo got ready. They didn't know what would happen, but they were ready to face it together. The biggest challenge of their lives was about to begin. The next morning, Ethan, Clara, and Leo woke up early. They knew today was important. They had to move fast to stay safe and find out the truth. They packed some bags with clothes and food. Ethan made sure to pack everything Lily needed. They didn't know how long they'd be gone. Just as they were about to leave, they heard a noise outside. Leo looked out the window and saw men in black clothes trying to break in. We have to go now. Leo shouted. They grabbed their bags and ran to the back door. Ethan held Lily close, trying to keep her quiet. They got into Leo's car and drove away fast. Ethan looked back and saw the men running after them. His heart was beating so fast. Where are we going? Clara asked, holding Lily tight. I know a safe place, Leo said. We'll go there and make a new plan. They drove for hours, always checking to make sure no one was following them. Ethan felt scared but also excited. He never thought he'd be running from bad guys like in a movie. They stopped at a small house in the countryside. Leo said it belonged to a friend who wouldn't ask questions. They went inside and tried to relax. What do we do now? Ethan asked, feeding Lily some baby food. Leo looked serious. We need to find proof of what Marcus is doing. We can't just tell the police without evidence. Clara nodded. I think I know where to look. There's a company in Seattle that Marcus works with a lot. Maybe we can find something there. They decided to go to Seattle. 
It was far away, but they thought it was their best chance to find out what was really going on. The next day, they got on a plane. Ethan was nervous about flying with Lily, but she was good the whole time. When they got to Seattle, they rented a car and found a place to stay. Clara used her computer skills to look into the company Marcus worked with. She found out they were having a big meeting in two days. This is our chance, Leo said. We can try to sneak in and find some proof. They spent the next day planning. Leo would pretend to be a security guard. Clara would try to hack into their computers. Ethan would stay with Lily and be ready to help if anything went wrong. On the day of the meeting, everyone was nervous. Ethan hugged Clara and Leo before they left. Be careful, he said. Ethan waited in their room, holding Lily close. He felt scared and helpless. He wished he could do more to help. Hours passed. Ethan jumped every time his phone made a noise. Finally, he got a message from Clara. We got it. Coming back now. Ethan felt so happy and relieved. But then he heard a noise outside the door. It wasn't Clara or Leo. Someone was trying to break in. Ethan grabbed Lily and ran to the bathroom. He locked the door and called Leo. Someone's here, he whispered. They're trying to get in. We're almost there, Leo said. Hide and stay quiet. We're coming. Ethan heard the main door break open. He held Lily tight, trying to keep her from crying. He could hear people searching the room. Just when he thought they would find him, he heard fighting outside. Then Leo's voice, Ethan. It's safe now. Ethan came out. Leo and Clara were there, with two men tied up on the floor. Are you okay? Clara asked, hugging Ethan and Lily. Ethan nodded, still shaking a little. What happened? Did you find what we needed? Leo smiled. We got it. We know what Marcus is doing and who he's working with. But we need to keep moving. More people might be coming. They quickly packed their things and left. As they drove away, Ethan felt both scared and hopeful. They were closer to the truth, but also in more danger. Where do we go now? Ethan asked. Leo looked serious. We need to find Marcus. He's the key to all of this. And I think I know where he might be. As they drove into the night, Ethan held Lily close. He thought about how much his life had changed in just a few days. He was no longer a lonely rich man. He was part of something big and important. He looked at Clara and Leo, his new friends. He felt grateful to have them. Together, they would face whatever came next. The car sped down the dark road. They didn't know what would happen, but they were ready. The chase wasn't over. It was just beginning. They drove all night, taking turns at the wheel. Ethan couldn't sleep. He kept thinking about Marcus. How did his brother get mixed up in all this? As the sun came up, Leo told them where they were going. I found out Marcus has a house in San Francisco. It's hidden, but I have the address. Ethan felt nervous. He hadn't seen Marcus in years. What would he say? How would Marcus react? They reached San Francisco in the afternoon. The house was big and fancy, hidden behind tall trees. They parked down the street and watched. What's the plan? Clara asked, holding Lily. Leo looked serious. Ethan, you should go alone first. He's your brother. Maybe he'll talk to you. Ethan nodded. He was scared, but he knew Leo was right. He walked up to the house and rang the doorbell. The door opened. There stood Marcus. He looked older, but Ethan knew him right away. Marcus's eyes got big when he saw Ethan. Ethan? What are you doing here? Marcus asked, looking nervous. Ethan took a deep breath. We need to talk, Marcus. It's important. Marcus let him in. They sat in a big room with fancy furniture. Ethan didn't know where to start. Marcus, I know about the stolen tech secrets. 
I know you're involved in something dangerous. Please, tell me what's going on. Marcus looked shocked. Then he got angry. How do you know about that? Are you spying on me? Ethan told him about finding Lily and the note. About the clues that led them to Marcus. As he talked, Marcus's face changed. He looked scared. Oh, Ethan, Marcus said, his voice shaking. You don't know what you've gotten into. These people, they're dangerous. Really dangerous. Marcus started telling Ethan everything. How he got involved with bad people who stole company secrets. How he thought he could make a lot of money. But things went wrong. They made me do terrible things, Ethan. I wanted to stop, but they threatened me. They said they'd hurt you if I didn't help them. Ethan felt sad and angry. But what about Lily? Why was she left with me? Marcus looked down. Lily, she's my daughter, Ethan. Her mother worked for one of the companies we stole from. When she found out what I did, she ran away with Lily. I think. I think they hurt her. They told me Lily would be safe with you. Ethan couldn't believe it. Lily was his niece. Marcus was her father. It was all connected. Just then, they heard a noise outside. Leo and Clara ran in, holding Lily. We have to go, Leo said. There are men outside. They found us. Marcus jumped up. Quick, there's a back way out. I'll show you. As they ran through the house, Marcus looked at Lily. Tears came to his eyes. I'm so sorry, he whispered. They got to a garage with a big car. Take this, Marcus said. It's fast. It'll help you get away. Ethan looked at his brother. Come with us, Marcus. Help us stop these people. Marcus shook his head. I can't. But I'll give you something that will help. It's all the proof you need to stop them. It's in the car. They heard shouting outside. The bad guys were close. Go. Marcus yelled. I'll hold them off. Keep Lily safe, Ethan. Please. Ethan wanted to argue, but there was no time. They got in the car and drove away fast. Ethan looked back and saw Marcus talking to the men who were chasing them. As they sped down the road, Ethan felt confused and sad. His brother had done bad things, but he also tried to help at the end. And now Ethan knew the truth about Lily. Clara found a briefcase in the car. It was full of papers and computer files. This must be the proof Marcus talked about, she said. Leo nodded. This is good. We can use this to stop these people. But we're not safe yet. They'll keep coming after us. Ethan held Lily close. She was family. His family. He made a promise to himself to always keep her safe. As they drove into the night, Ethan thought about everything that had happened. He thought about Marcus, about the danger they were in, about the big job they had to do. He looked at Clara, Leo, and Lily. They were his new family now. Together, they would face whatever came next. They had the truth, and they had each other. Now they just had to stay alive long enough to use it. As they drove through the night, Clara looked through the files Marcus had given them. Her eyes got big as she read. Guys, she said, this is huge. It's not just about stealing tech secrets. These people, they're trying to control everything. They want to use the stolen tech to spy on people, to control the internet, everything. Leo nodded grimly. I've heard rumors about groups like this. They're called syndicates. They're like super powerful gangs that try to control governments and big companies. Ethan felt scared. This was bigger than he ever imagined. What do we do now? He asked, holding Lily close. We need to get this information to the right people, Leo said. I have a friend in the FBI. She can help us. But we need to be careful. The syndicate probably has spies everywhere. They decided to head to Washington, D.C., where Leo's FBI friend was. But they knew they couldn't just drive straight there. 
The bad guys would be looking for them. We need a plan, Clara said. A way to trick them. They came up with an idea. They would split up. Leo would take the car and drive in one direction, pretending to have the files. Ethan, Clara, and Lily would go another way, taking buses and trains to D.C. Before they split up, Leo gave them special phones that couldn't be tracked. Be careful, he said. I'll meet you in D.C. in three days. Saying goodbye to Leo was hard. Ethan felt scared to be without him. But he knew this was the best plan. Ethan, Clara, and Lily started their journey. They took a bus, then a train, always watching to make sure no one was following them. Ethan was amazed at how good Clara was with Lily. She always knew how to keep her quiet and happy. On the second day of their trip, something scary happened. They were at a train station when Ethan saw a man watching them. He looked just like one of the men who had chased them before. Clara, Ethan whispered, I think they found us. Clara looked around calmly. Okay, don't panic. Let's split up. You take Lily and go to the bathroom. I'll meet you at the back of the station in 10 minutes. Ethan nodded and walked away with Lily. His heart was beating so fast. He went into the bathroom and waited, holding Lily tight. After what felt like forever, he heard Clara's voice. Ethan, it's me. It's safe now. He came out. Clara looked tired, but okay. What happened? He asked. I led him away from you, she said. Then I lost him in the crowd. But we need to move. Now. They quickly left the station and found a small hotel to hide in. As they sat in the room, Ethan looked at Clara with new respect. You were amazing back there, he said. Clara smiled. Thanks. I guess all those spy movies I watched were good for something. That night, as Lily slept, Ethan and Clara talked. They shared stories about their lives, their hopes, their fears. Ethan felt close to Clara in a way he hadn't felt with anyone in a long time. The next day, they finally made it to Washington, D.C. They were tired and scared, but they had made it. Now they just had to wait for Leo. They found a small cafe to wait in. Ethan was nervous. What if Leo didn't come? What if the bad guys found them first? Just when Ethan thought he couldn't take the waiting anymore, he saw Leo walk in. He looked tired but smiled when he saw them. You made it, Leo said, hugging them. Good job. Now, let's go meet my FBI friend. It's time to end this. As they left the cafe, Ethan felt both scared and excited. They were close to finishing this big, dangerous adventure. He looked at Clara, Leo, and Lily. His new family. Together, they were strong. Together, they could do this. They walked towards the FBI building, ready to face whatever came next. The end was near, but Ethan knew the hardest part might still be ahead of them. Leo led them to a big building in the middle of Washington, D.C. This is where my friend works, he said. Her name is Agent Sarah Thompson. She's tough, but she'll help us. They went inside and met Agent Thompson. She was tall with short hair and a serious face. She listened as they told her everything that had happened. This is very serious, she said when they finished. If what you're saying is true, this syndicate is a big threat to our country. Maybe even the whole world. Agent Thompson looked at the files they brought. Her eyes got big as she read. This is exactly what we needed, she said. With this, we can stop them. But it won't be easy. She explained that they would need to catch the syndicate's leaders all at once. If they didn't, some might escape and start all over again. We're going to set a trap, Agent Thompson said. But it's dangerous. Are you sure you want to be part of this? Ethan looked at Clara and Leo. They all nodded. We started this, Ethan said. We want to finish it. Agent Thompson smiled a little. Okay. Here's the plan. She told them that the syndicate was having a big meeting in an old factory outside the city. 
they were going to pretend to sell them some new, very valuable tech secrets. But really, she said, we'll be waiting to catch them all. Ethan, Clara, and Leo would go to the meeting, pretending to have the secrets to sell. They would wear hidden cameras and microphones so the FBI could watch and listen. What about Lily? Ethan asked, worried. She'll stay here with our best agents, Agent Thompson said. She'll be safer here than anywhere else. Ethan didn't like leaving Lily, but he knew it was the best choice. The next day, they got ready for the big meeting. Ethan was scared, but also excited. He wanted to stop these bad people who had hurt so many, including his own brother. They drove to the old factory. It was big and dark and a little scary. Ethan's heart was beating fast as they went inside. There were a lot of people there, all looking very serious. A man in a fancy suit came up to them. Do you have what we asked for? He said in a low voice. Leo nodded and held up a briefcase. Right here, he said. Do you have our money? The man smiled, but it wasn't a nice smile. Of course. But first, let's see what you brought us. Just as Leo was about to open the briefcase, there was a loud noise. Suddenly, the room was full of FBI agents. FBI. Everyone freeze. Agent Thompson shouted. Everything happened very fast after that. People were running and shouting. Ethan saw the man in the suit try to run away, but Leo caught him. In just a few minutes, it was all over. The FBI had caught all the syndicate leaders. Agent Thompson came over to them, smiling. We did it, she said. Thanks to you, we've stopped one of the biggest threats our country has ever faced. Ethan felt happy and relieved. It was over. They had won. They went back to the FBI building. Ethan ran to Lily and hugged her tight. It's over, sweetie, he said. You're safe now. We're all safe. In the next few days, a lot of things happened. The FBI arrested many people who were part of the syndicate. They found Marcus and brought him in too. He would have to answer for the things he did, but because he helped at the end, he might not be in too much trouble. Ethan, Clara, and Leo were called heroes. People wanted to interview them and thank them. But all Ethan wanted was to go home with Lily and start their new life together. Before they left Washington, Agent Thompson came to see them one last time. You've done a great thing, she said. Our country owes you a debt. If you ever need anything, just let me know. Ethan thanked her, feeling proud but also ready to go home. He looked at Clara and Leo, wondering what would happen next with them. As if reading his mind, Clara spoke up. So, what now? she asked, looking at Ethan and Leo. Leo smiled. Well, I think I might take a long vacation. Maybe somewhere sunny and quiet. Ethan felt a little sad. He had gotten used to having Leo and Clara around. They had become like family. What about you, Clara? Ethan asked, trying not to sound too hopeful. Clara looked at Ethan and Lily. Well, I was thinking, maybe I could stick around for a while. Help out with Lily? If that's okay with you, of course. Ethan felt his heart jump. Really? I'd love that. We'd love that, wouldn't we, Lily? Lily giggled and reached for Clara, who took her with a big smile. They said goodbye to Leo, promising to stay in touch. Then Ethan, Clara, and Lily headed back to Ethan's home in Savannah. The big house in Savannah felt different when they got back. It wasn't lonely anymore. It was full of life and laughter. Ethan officially adopted Lily. It wasn't hard, since he was her uncle and her father, Marcus, was going to be in jail for a while. Ethan promised to tell Lily about her real dad when she was older. Clara stayed, just like she said she would. She helped with Lily and brought joy to the house. Ethan found himself looking forward to every day, excited to spend time with Clara and Lily. Weeks turned into months. Ethan and Clara grew closer. They would stay up late talking after Lily went to bed. They shared their hopes and dreams, their fears and worries. 
One night, as they sat on the porch watching the stars, Ethan realized something. He was in love with Clara. He had been for a while, but he was just now admitting it to himself. Clara, he said, his heart beating fast. I need to tell you something. Clara looked at him, her eyes shining in the moonlight. What is it, Ethan? Ethan took a deep breath. I love you, Clara. I think I have for a while now. You and Lily, you're my family. I don't want that to ever change. Clara's face broke into a big smile. Oh, Ethan, she said. I love you too. I was hoping you felt the same way. They kissed under the stars, both feeling happier than they ever had before. The next morning, they told Lily. She was excited, jumping up and down and clapping her hands. Does this mean Clara will be my mommy? She asked. Ethan and Clara looked at each other, smiling. Would you like that, Lily? Clara asked. Lily nodded enthusiastically. Yes, yes, yes. And so, the little family became official. Ethan and Clara got married in a small ceremony in the backyard. Leo came, and so did Agent Thompson. Even Marcus was allowed to come, under guard. He hugged Ethan and thanked him for taking care of Lily. Life settled into a happy routine. Ethan still ran his business, but he made sure to be home for dinner every night. Clara started a small tech company of her own, using her computer skills for good. Lily grew and thrived, surrounded by love. They still had adventures, but smaller ones. They went on trips, explored new places, and made new friends. But the best part was always coming home to each other. Ethan often thought back to that night when he found Lily on his doorstep. It had been scary and confusing then. But now, he was grateful. That little baby had changed his life in the best way possible. As he watched Clara and Lily playing in the garden one sunny afternoon, Ethan felt a happiness he had never known before. He had a family, a purpose, and love. The lonely, isolated man he used to be was gone. In his place was a happy husband, a loving father, and a man who knew the value of family and friendship. Life wasn't perfect. There were still challenges and hard days. But Ethan knew that with Clara and Lily by his side, he could face anything. They were stronger together, just like they had been during their big adventure. And so... As the sun set on another beautiful day in Savannah, Ethan joined his family in the garden. They laughed and played, making new memories and cherishing each moment together. This was his life now, and he wouldn't change it for anything in the world. A year had passed since their big adventure. Ethan's house, once quiet and lonely, was now always full of noise and laughter. Lily was growing fast, turning into a smart and curious little girl. Clara had become a wonderful mother, balancing her work and family life with grace. One sunny morning, as they sat having breakfast, Ethan had an idea. How about we go on a trip, he suggested. We could visit some of the places we went during our adventure, but this time for fun, not running from bad guys. Clara's eyes lit up. That's a great idea. What do you think, Lily? Lily clapped her hands. Yes. Can we see Uncle Leo? They laughed. Leo had become a favorite uncle to Lily, visiting often and always bringing her little gifts. So they planned their trip. They would start in Seattle, then go to San Francisco, and end in Washington, D.C. This time, they could enjoy the cities without looking over their shoulders. As they packed for the trip, Ethan found the old note that had come with Lily that first night. He smiled, remembering how scared and confused he had been. Now, that note was the beginning of the best thing that ever happened to him. Their first stop was Seattle. They visited the Space Needle and rode the ferries. Lily loved every minute of it. In San Francisco, they rode the cable cars and visited the Golden Gate Bridge. Ethan and Clara even took a moment to visit Marcus's old house, remembering the turning point in their adventure. In Washington, D.C., they met up with Leo and Agent Thompson. They had a picnic near the National Mall, laughing and sharing stories. 
Lily loved hearing about their big adventure, though they kept the scarier parts out for now. As they sat there, watching Lily play with Leo, Ethan felt a wave of gratitude. He looked at Clara, who smiled back at him. They didn't need words to express how they felt. They both knew how lucky they were. On their last night in D.C., as Lily slept in their hotel room, Ethan and Clara stood on the balcony, looking at the city lights. You know, Clara said, a year ago, I never would have imagined my life could be this good. Ethan nodded. Me neither. I was so alone before. Now, I have everything I could ever want. Clara leaned her head on his shoulder. Do you ever wonder what's next for us? Ethan thought for a moment. I'm not sure. But I know whatever it is, we'll face it together. Maybe we'll have more kids. Maybe we'll start a charity to help other families. Or maybe we'll just enjoy every day as it comes. Clara smiled. I like all of those ideas. As they stood there, holding each other and looking at the future stretching out before them, Ethan felt a sense of peace and excitement. Life had thrown him a big surprise with Lily, and it had led to the greatest adventure of his life. Now, he was ready for whatever new adventures lay ahead. The next morning, as they boarded their plane home, Ethan looked at his little family. Clara was helping Lily with her seatbelt, both of them laughing at some shared joke. He felt his heart swell with love. Whatever the future held, Ethan knew one thing for sure. With Clara and Lily by his side, every day would be an adventure worth living. And he couldn't wait to see what happened next. As the plane took off, carrying them back to their home in Savannah, Ethan smiled. The biggest adventure of his life wasn't over. In many ways, it was just beginning.